China, it's truly a vast and fascinating country. 9,600,000 square kilometers of land, 3 million square kilometers of seas. And it's never still, changing with the rotation of the seasons. To fly like a bird is to see things that are beyond your imagination. You visit places you would never have dreamed of before. And even familiar places when you look down on them from on high will assume a completely different appearance. We'll take you to explore places close at hand and far away to witness nature and geography, humanity and history. Join us as we embark on a unique journey across the sky. In the Chinese heartland is the province of Shanxi, which can be roughly divided into three parts. The beautiful, fertile south, the vast Guangzhou plain in the middle, and the Loess Plateau to the north. And across the entire province extend the Qinling Mountains. Our journey begins in the depths of the Qinling Mountains. We'll experience the power of the glaciers on Mount Taibai and we'll get up close to the rare forest wildlife. We'll follow in the footsteps of the hermits of the Misty Mountains and take on the challenge of climbing Mount Huashan. This vast mountain range extends for 1,600 kilometers from east to west. It's longer by a third than the Alps, the greatest mountain range in Europe. The Qinling Mountains are a natural barrier extending across the middle of China. Neither the cold air current from the north in winter, nor the warm and moist current from the south in summer can cross easily. The mountains also form a natural boundary between north and south China. Mount Taibai, the highest peak in the Qinling Mountains, is located in a zone that was once frozen. 120,000 years ago, global temperature changes caused the extinction of numerous species of wildlife in many parts of the world. The Qinling Mountains were the only place on Earth where certain species survived. In 1978, an expedition set out to find a long-lost bird, the crested ibis. In the course of a 50,000-kilometer journey lasting three years, all the team found were three crested ibis feathers. Later, however, seven ibises were discovered in Shanxi province. were the only surviving crested ibises 
in the world. The birds feed on insects found in paddy fields. To save the birds, people began inundating their dry land. Thanks to this protection effort, today more than 1,700 crested ibises are now inhabiting the area. We keep climbing as we approach panda territory. A population of over 300 wild pandas lives in the Chinling Mountains, making it the most likely place on the planet to encounter a panda in its natural habitat. This is a rare brown giant panda. A popular joke among those who see it is that finally you can take a colour photograph of a panda. To date, only five brown giant pandas have ever been discovered anywhere on Earth, and all of them were living in the Chinling Mountains. Brown pandas often give birth to black and white cubs. Rarely do they produce brown ones. Around 2,000 metres above sea level, we arrive at a sanctuary for golden snub-nosed monkeys. In the long, cold winters in the Chinling Mountains, the monkeys struggle to find enough to eat. Three times a day, a keeper has to lead them to a feeding station. But the monkeys prefer to rely on themselves. During the summer, when there's plenty of food in the forest, few of them bother with the feeding stations. One day, an uninvited guest invaded Ping County, causing considerable panic. The police were called in, and they drove it back into the forest. The intruder was a takin. Although they look like oxen, takins are more closely related to goats. Tuckins inhabit dense forests at high altitudes, which is why they're rarely sighted. Tuckins prefer to stay in groups. Anyone who encounters a lone tuckin is advised to be wary, as these are hot-tempered animals. Continuing our flight, we reach the central part of the Chinling Mountains. The dense forests of the Zhongnan Mountains are a place where hermits retreat to. To turn one's back on wealth and revelry in favour of a peaceful life among tranquil peaks and gentle rivers is a tradition observed since the Tang Dynasty. Up until 20 years ago, a few hundred hermits called these mountains home. But in recent years, 
their numbers have swollen to over 5,000. Flying northeast from the central Qinling Mountains, we catch sight of Mount Huashan. The granite rising straight from the ground is certainly a unique sight. The top of Mount Huashan is a popular place to visit, as it has been the setting for many classic face-offs and kung fu novels. Most tourists climb to the top with the assistance of the strong cables. Others choose to take the cable car. For some, the attraction is the excitement of pitting themselves against the precipitous cliff. In ancient times, it would have been almost impossible to reach the summit. In the 7th century, Taoist monks cut a path up the slope. This gave rise to a saying, there's only ever been one path up Mount Huashan. Shan.